Thank you. And once again, a very good morning and welcome all. May I request our president, Ashish Jhavar, to welcome the gathering. Thank you, Navneet. And uh, good morning, Suprabhat friends. I welcome you all to this yet another beautiful Sunday morning uh, of interesting business development agenda. I welcome friends of M Circle Chennai. Amen. members from Sholapur are honorary members and friends when I look back in these last six months a lot has changed and I'm sure you would agree with me. Uh, of course in M-Circle we have a lot of interaction so uh, a few members ke saath jab meri kuch baate ho rahi thi, so some had said me Ashish uh, in business management information I am able to get better leads and good customer service. Interesting. So, कुछ दोस्त ऐसे भी थे जिन्होंने बोला कि हमारी पूरी industry disrupt हो चुकी है. But उन्होंने हिम्मत नहीं हारी and they came into new opportunities and ventures, which is fantastic attitude of theirs. So, कुछ ऐसे भी लोग थे जो मुझे बोले कि और मैं उनमें से मैं एक हूँ. अब तो यार घर से काम करना अच्छा लगता है छह महीने घर से काम कर रहे हैं एंड इसमें बचत ही बचत है टाइम की बचत पेट्रोल की बचत एंड uh, सबसे अच्छा मुझे डब्बा ले जाना नहीं पड़ता ऑफिस आई गेट हॉट फूड एट होम फ्रेंड्स इट इज आल्सो वेरी सैड टू टेल यू दैट वी हैव लॉस्ट अ लॉट ऑफ नियर एंड डियर वंस इन दिस लास्ट फ्यू मंथ्स एंड आई कैन ओनली से वन थिंग that this time is very challenging and it is extremely critical that we take care of our well-being. And as leaders, for all the people who we manage, it is a lot more important for us to be conscious, cautious, and also very sensitive to what's happening around us. A famous baseball coach, Yogi Berra, once said, you can see a lot just by observing. A very powerful message, friends. Observe the change in behaviors of our people around us. Identify those red flags and talk to them. I feel the best therapy is talking. As they say in Bhagavad Gita, well, jo hota hai, achche ke liye hota hai. Unhi shabdo ke saath, I would now like to welcome the vibrant speaker from my own favorite city, or I, rather I would say my own favorite Calcutta City, Sri Evro Roy. Welcome, sir. Nice to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you. May I now have uh, my committee member, uh, Anuj Bihani, to introduce the speaker and the topic. Anuj, I've unmuted you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, am I audible now, Neet? Yes, yes, aud absolutely. Good morning. Great to see you, Avilo. And uh, so with the rapidly changing business scenario and a bunch of innovative and disruptive companies coming into existence. All traditional businesses, the way Ashi said, have at some point of time or other reflected on their business model and considered pivoting into something new or trying a pivot on the existing business. So while most traditional businesses have been conceived on the model of being built to last, the newer business models have been designed to see how can they capture or realize the value of the business. We've all seen young companies like Flipkart, Ola, Oyo, Baiju, many others that have turned unicorns in just a little over a decade. And at the same time, traditional companies, conventional companies like Reliance are not just diversifying their business offerings, but also divesting equity with valuations that are insane and unheard of. And I'm sure all of us have questions on what's the best way to capture the value of a business what strategy should we adopt to maximize value of a business? How do we time it right? And other questions like, you know, should I go with debt, equity? What's the right instrument to raise funds? What's the right time to approach investors? Uh, what do investors look for in a startup? And what are the ways that you could possibly maximize valuation? Well, to answer these questions and more, who better could we have other than Avila Roy from Calcutta Ventures? who's been kind enough to give us his time and share his insights. So uh, when I was 
us to introduce Avilo, I did a little bit of Googling to figure out more about Avilo. And I must tell you, it's got an extremely, extremely impressive and intriguing background. So it's indeed my honor and privilege to introduce you, Avilo. So I'm not going to give away his age. I leave that for the rest of you to do some work and figure out because, you know, uh, that would get you closer to knowing Avilo and uh, knowing what he's all about. But just a little more, you know, uh, on what Avilo has done in the past. So he started his first startup at the age of around 19. And that's when he was still in college in IIT, the other IIT from the United States, Illinois Institute of Technology. So he built a patent, uh, patent pending product. And uh, as a computer engineer, he turned the startup idea of his into a multi-billion dollar valuation business at the age of 22. Over the years, Avilo has uh, built many businesses, not just built businesses, he's built and sold businesses. And he's uh, been a, so that makes him a serial tech entrepreneur. He's been uh, kind of, you know, uh, wore the hat of being an investor. He's been a TV host. And um, he's worked on many different kinds of products ranging from consumer electronics to artificial intelligence, healthcare, food automation, wireless communications, all the right technology products or technology, uh, Avilo has touched them all and he's quite well aware of this. Uh, Avilo is, uh, at this young age, he's been impressive. He's spoken at over 500 uh, plus audiences ranging from the IITs to Startup America, Invest India. He's been at Rashtrapati Bhavan. He's a TEDx talk speaker and many other such impressive forums where he's spoken. He's got over 150 plus awards that's visible with the beautiful background that he's got on his, uh, you know, in his office or, you know, house where he's sitting in. And he's mentored many, many, uh, you know, uh, aspiring entrepreneurs. And he's kind of done his bit of trying to see how he can bridge the entrepreneurship gap and, you know, get people on to being uh, better entrepreneurs. So uh, Avilo is right now the managing director of Kolkata Ventures. He's a director on ECC Engineering Private Limited. He's on the board of advisors of a bunch of places, for example, the Amity University on Comedy Manch. Um, he's a guest lecturer at Indian Illinois Institute of Technology, Northwestern University, uh, IITs, uh, all in Bombay, Delhi, Kharagpur. And uh, so very, very impressive. I think it's going to be a very inspiring uh, one hour ahead of us. And uh, another interesting fact, you know, just to know that Avilo is also the great, great grandson of none other than Sarojini Naidu. And he continues the legacy forward by tirelessly serving the Indian youth through entrepreneurship education. He uh, leans on to the principles of Bhagavad Gita and tries to see how he can link those principles with business. So with this, uh, Avilo, I give it, hand it over to you and uh, looking forward eagerly to seeing how the next one hour is gonna pan out, Avilo. Thank you so much, Mr. Bihani. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bhaiya, for inviting me. Uh, thank you very much uh, to all of you, uh, Mr. Jhawar, Mr. Mundra, Mr. Kishore, and all of the wonderful uh, people here. You know, in Bengal, uh, we have a very high respect for Marwaris and, and Banias because by nature, Bengalis are not business folks. Uh, and we're like, yeah, you know, the community spirit that the Marwaris have, that's why they are growing so much and we Bengali just pull each other down. So I, I feel extremely uh, honored that I'm in the middle of all a few business tycoons out there uh, and, and I have the opportunity to share something that I have learned uh, and, and known. So I'll share my screen. Um, Okay. Can you see my screen? All right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So I'll start with this uh, little quote. So I was um, on the panel for entrepreneurship, education and White House. And uh, when President Obama came into power in 2008, one of the first things he did was start up America. And uh, so I was like the poster child for startups in Midwest. And we were going from colleges and schools. And one of the schools, high schools gifted me this after my speech that says, can't spell entrepreneur, be one and hire someone who can. I found this as very profound, very simple, and yet uh, a very b beautiful definition of what is entrepreneurship. We don't have to be experts. We just get the right people on board and we get started. Now, you guys don't need to be told you're already entrepreneurs. So a little bit about my background as, as Mr. Bhaiya and Mr. Uh, you know, uh, Bihani said, so being an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur idol actually, which is like the Indian idol you have for music in US you have for entrepreneurship. 
from a very early age, been mentored by uh, billionaires like CEO of Motorola, Nokia, and companies like that. So I, that's my, my journey from 19 to 22, you know, zero to million dollars was very quick because I learned from their mistakes and I learned from their successes. So I didn't have to make those same mistakes. Uh, winning 15 business plan competitions, that gave me initial capital. And then we got this amazing team on board, uh, CTO of Motorola, head of marketing for L'Oreal, uh, VP of innovations for Wrigley, people like that. And we built these businesses in India, Canada, Hong Kong, uh, and United States, of course, right? Uh, Kolkata Ventures being my first uh, company in India after coming back in 2016. So, so far, uh, there has been 400 plus revenue generating startups. Uh, we are in five countries thanks to the lockdown. So we, we have been digitally incubating, virtually incubating. So it was very easy for us to spread uh, uh, across India and outside. 11.5 uh, crores already raised during the lockdown alone. I'm not just saying like 11.5 crores in 2020, but just during lockdown. And the interesting part of this is that the investors who invested, it was Zoom calls. They never met each other. The due diligence happened digitally and the money also reached, you know, digitally in the bank account. So this is one of the most phenomenal things that lockdown uh, taught me that, you know, because in initially investment was very geography uh, proximate. So if you're in Chennai, you get Chennai angels. If you're in Mumbai, you get, you know, some of the Mumbai investors. But during the lockdown, what we saw was it doesn't matter where you are. Investors are happy and willing to use Zoom and, and platforms like that to come on board and support you. Right. Uh, it's in the US collaboration. We have amazing people from US and India who are all entrepreneurs gone from zero to million. And, and those are the people who help our startups uh, grow some of our successful startups that are making anywhere between five lakhs to 70 lakhs a month. Uh, these are already funded. Uh, others are in the process. Like I said, you know, I teach at IITs, IIMs and uh, other US universities as well. Uh, you can Google and just see the things that are going to go details. Now let's get started right into the uh, presentation. So I'll start with the definition. Uh, so two things, as I speak, uh, there's going to be uh, two sources of knowledge I'm going to come from. One is my own experience, of course. And the other thing is uh, lean startup methodology. So lean startup methodology is the success uh, behind startups that you see, like you said, Flipkart, Zomato, all these unicorns you talk about. Lean startup methodology has come out of Stanford University after uh, researching 10,000 successful businesses, right? And figuring out what works, right? And today, most professional investors who invest look for design thinking, lean startup methodology behind the startups because that's what uh, really makes your success criteria far, far uh, higher and your risk profile far lower when you follow those principles because it's science, it works, right? Uh, in Kolkata Ventures, we have seen 445 plus uh, revenue generating startups, zero to revenue using lean startup uh, in less than 45 days, right? So that's how fast I'm sure all of you are in a lot of traditional businesses and your parents might have started it or you might have started 40 years ago, 20 years ago. But in today, uh, like Mr. Jhaver very rightly said that all these companies in less than a decade are going into zero to billion and more, right? And, and I'm gonna touch on all those little things. Of course, we have an hour, so I'll focus more on investments. So according to Lean Startup Methodology, the definition of a startup is it's a temporary organization designed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model. So uh, one of the things that investors look for first things is, is it repeatable across geographies? Is it something that will work in Chennai only or will it also work in Bangalore, Pune? Will it work in tier two, tier three cities, right? Will it work outside India? So is it repeatable and scalable without hiring 10,000 telecallers? right? Because it's easy to have a lot of salespeople do the job, but can you do it digitally? It's a tech enabled scalability, right? That's one of the first things. And a startup is the search process for looking for that model, that business model that allows you to be uh, scalable and repeatable across geographies beyond your own. <clears throat> so I was told uh, to start with some common mistakes uh, investment mistakes. So I'll, uh, and I understand that uh, many of you are looking for investment and many of you are from the background where you want to invest in startups. So I will cover both sides of the story. I do my best to cover in case I 
missed something, do feel free to ask your questions in the chat box and I will uh, you know, try to answer them as we go along. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the first thing, the first mistake uh, that, that, I, that is very common amongst entrepreneurs is the analysis paralysis, especially those who are engineers, those who are tech focused uh, or those who are left brain, you know, uh, that means CA, that means people who are very good with numbers and logic, right? One of the biggest problems with a uh, uh, logical mind is we love to analyze, write project reports and go lost. And I've seen companies going on and on and on for a year, three years, four years, you know, just analyzing what would be the perfect thing. And by the time you actually get to market, it's already over and somebody else has already come on board with the imperfect product, but people are willing to buy it because people don't care about perfection. People don't know what is perfection, right? So analysis paralysis is a first very common mistake. Product market fit. So product market fit basically means, uh, for example, uh, when the iPod came out, right? I was at that time a student. So at that time, if you remember, there were people having MP3 players all over across, even Microsoft had Zune. And so they were selling well and they were all like, one gig, two gigs, whatever. What does Steve Jobs said? He said, thousand songs in your pocket. And since you're overpaying for it, I'll give you a white headphone, right? So everybody knows you're wearing it. So what he tapped into was the show off aspect, right? People feel that I'm part of a, of a clan that cares about design, cares about aesthetics, right? And that product, you know, iPod became perfect with the, the young, urban professionals, people in the uh, 18 to 35 age group went crazy over it. And then of course, iPhones came and whatnot, whatnot. So product market fit means you can have the best product for the wrong market. So another example is uh, Segways. So the founder of Segway actually got to hear him live. He said, uh, Avelo, I locked myself up in a room for six months. And I came with four gyroscopes, anti-gravity and all, where you put your body weight, you know Segways? Those two wheels on two sides, you put your body weight, you go forward, you put your body weight backward, you go backward, right? It balances itself. It's a great innovation. And it came out at the same time as uh, uh, iPod, but it didn't do well. So according to the founder of Segways, he thought it would replace walking, it would replace cars, right? It didn't. It, uh, it's, today it's used by police officers and tourists, right? Because it's very expensive and people don't like to use it. So he didn't do his market research, whereas Steve Jobs did, right? And so product market fit means you can have the right product for the right market that's hungry for it, right? And when they're hungry for it, they don't care about perfection. They'll grab anything you give them and they'll pay for it, right? So we don't go for perfection. We go for market that's ready. It's a dire enough problem. You go for it and it grabs it and you build, test, learn as you go, right? You build something, you test it with the market, you learn from the market, you get better and better and better. Okay, I'll try to use more Hindi. I remember I'm supposed to speak in Hindi. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so um, then comes teams. So one of the biggest things that investors invest in is people, right? Uh, because uh, in a, in a, you can have an average idea, but if you don't have the right team, not the dynamic team, then average uh, idea cannot be taken anywhere. But a great idea also can die if the team is not capable or not skilled. But with the average idea and a great team, they can leverage it, twist, turn, and take it to success. Just to give you an example, some of you might have heard of Groupon. Groupon was founded by a guy who was a pianist, right? He, he literally had a piano major, not a tech guy. And then he built a software for politics, you know, for activists. And that didn't do too well. So one and a half year, he and Eric Liftowski, who is a billionaire entrepreneur in the US, both of them were pivoting this market, that market, this market, that market. And finally they found, aha, advertising works. So Groupon became huge. It became a $6 billion company uh, in, in that domain. Of course, they made some mistakes and they fell from that, that also. But the point is, you have to figure out, this is the product I have, it's a good product, but what market does it fit into? For example, Zoom cars. We don't hear about Zoom cars because Zoom cars actually makes profit. It doesn't need too much investment. But the guy who started Zoom cars, for three months, he went from tier to city to tier to city, village to village, finding out what is the issue India faces with transportation. And then he figured out, okay, here is a model. 
and Zoomcar uh, has been in existence and it's uh, profitable. It's doing very, very well. So the point is good product, hungry market, that's a product market fit. Uh, and that's one thing that really gets the investors excited about. And if you don't do that, uh, the first meeting is your last meeting, right? Uh, so teams, one of the things about teams is uh, sometimes the teams tend to be very top heavy. So you use like a VP of uh, PepsiCo and uh, this and that, and the investor looks at them and like, oh my God, the salary these guys are going to charge is going to be mind blowing. I don't think I want to afford them. Uh, another aspect is all college students, right? That is also a bad idea. So there has to be some level of a criteria where it's like, you see that these people are capable, they have a history. So it could be IIT, IM kind of history, or it's a history of actually being in the industry and knowing the industry, having the knowledge and having done enough, made enough mistakes, made enough successes that you can build this business well. Another thing about teams is misleading data and information. A lot of times, and this is very common, just so you know, uh, entrepreneurs do fudge data, right? Entrepreneurs uh, showcase something that is not true. So for example, I was looking at a deal and uh, these were, so I'll tell you two stories. One is, it's an agrotech startup, so agriculture based. So they basically said, we have a tie up with Reliance. So Reliance uh, was putting up these antennas for Geo, right? And they said, we put our sensors on these antennas and we can predict uh, which farm is going to see uh, a, a low cost attack or any kind of you know, issues with uh, water, you know, rainfall not happening and whatnot. So we can give you really micro analysis of the weather, climate, uh, uh, insect attack and all of that. I said, that's fantastic. Uh, so how much you want to raise $2 million? Okay, great. Let's do it. So I was about to do it. I called up uh, one of my mentors who happens to be the former CEO of Monsanto. I uh, sir, you know, I'm uh, investing in this company along with a couple of my friends. I uh, just wanted to ask you, uh, uh, is it okay? आपने सुना है ऐसे टेक्नोलॉजी के बारे में उसने बोला भाई यूएस में तो ये टेक्नोलॉजी 25 साल से है अफ्रीका में भी है एंड इंडिया में चार प्लेयर्स है और ये है उन, उनका नाम आई सेड वाओ आई सेड उसने पूछा कि अवेलो जाके पूछो उनके पास कुछ पेटेंट या इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी प्रोटेक्शन है कि नहीं 99% चांस के उसके पास नहीं है उसके मतलब है आप इन्वेस्ट करोगे कोई और आके दे विल हैव एन एडवांटेज ओवर देम बिकॉज़ दे कैन शट देम डाउन इजीली दे डोंट हैव आईपी राइट्स I said, Achha, very good. So I went to the final meeting and I asked them, I said, look, I just have one question for you. Do you have any intellectual protection, intellectual property protection? They said, no. I said, who owns the intellectual property protection rights? IP, patents, etc. Who has it? And they said, who has it? I said, how do you expect to win in this market? They said, we have a geo. I said, yes, he is a partner. But if somebody sues you in court, what happens? It's like, yes, that is a problem. Hai. So obviously the deal fell down, but thank God one five minute phone call with the CEO of ex CEO of Monsanto helped me something I didn't know. So, uh, and this was 2017, I think. And I'll tell you 2020, you know, another company I was looking at in Hyderabad and they said, you know, this is for senior citizens, underserved market. They have all the money. We're targeting NRIs, right? Great. I said, okay, fantastic. And this was just a digital business, a product, uh, an app. So I asked him, how many downloads have you? He said, 10,000 downloads and it's growing. I said, fantastic. So I asked him, can I see what is the You know, what is the app console uh, data and all that. So then I saw 10,000 downloads and 10,300 uninstalls. So the people I don't know how it's even possible, but the people are uninstalled. Right? So they're pushing in money, Facebook ads, to get the downloads. So investors, ko, they are only telling half truth. Ki here are the downloads. But the other half is quite visible ki uninstalls ho raha hai. Matlab ki app kaam nahi kar raha hai ya isme wo value proposition nahi hai ya user interface jo hai kharaab hai, right? To usse just one data and mujhe pata chala ki ye log beshne ki koshish kar raha hai jis cheez ko usko khud bhi pata nahi ki isme kya hai because they had not seen the data themselves. So wrong team, wrong, you know, great business idea but wrong team and wrong execution. 
सो द इम्पोर्टेंट इज अगर कोई फाउंडर झूठ बोलता है इमीडिएटली दे लूज ट्रस्ट एंड ट्रस्ट मी इन्वेस्टर्स टॉक टू इच अदर ऑल द टाइम बिकॉज कितने सारे इन्वेस्टर पिचेस होते हैं ऑल ओवर द कंट्री सो एवरी इन्वेस्टर्स पुल इन टू डिफरेंट डिफरेंट मीटिंग्स एंड देन लाइक ओ या आई नो दैट कंपनी सो ऑल दिस कन्वर्सेशन हैपन सो इफ एक भी कोई झूठ बोलता है देन लाइक डोंट ट्रस्ट दोज गाइज दे लाइक right you get a bad reputation so that's what happens uh, you know one of the very key things is people inflate numbers inflate uh, things and if you cannot back it up with google analytics google app console app store console all of that is transparent if you have a website or app transparent right uh, of course other things now also with uh, gst and everything uh, we have all our books are pretty much transparent as as ever next thing is overuse of technology so hum you know where whichever investor pitch you go to back in the days it used to be cancer cure we have the cure for cancer abhi hota hai ki we have artificial intelligence augmented reality this that all of that now the problem is uh investors are very intelligent so after hearing so many pitches you educate yourself even if you're not tech background you know that artificial intelligence and machine learning does not work unless you have data sets Google has data of billions of people. Just say so. I'll very shortly explain artificial intelligence, machine learning. Just say, bacha hota hai, juta muh me gaya, gulab jamun muh me gaya, right? You say, okay, gulab jamun is edible. Juta not edible. So you learn as a child ki muh me kya jata hai, jo khane ki cheez hota hai. So as you grow up, you learn by observing things. Same thing with artificial intelligence, machine learning, that you observe ki acha. Every day at nine o'clock, this family goes to bed. They turn off the lights. So the home automation system will learn, and then every day at nine o'clock, automatically it will turn off the lights for you, turn on the AC for you, etc., etc. Right? So it has a way of pattern recognition, but that re- requires data. Just like me, I was talking to Samsung. I'll get to Samsung story later on in another slide. But the point is, enough data is available with which you the the system learns ki kya karna hai, kya nahi karna hai. but without data any startup that is saying artificial intelligence is bluffing you because they don't have access to data unless they have a tie up with a phone company or amazon or google ventures and invested then they can take the amazon data or the google data or the samsung data and then use their artificial intelligence algorithm the point is don't just give jargons just to showcase i have so much technology the important principle is solve the problem in the cheapest most efficient easiest possible way you don't have to make things artificially com- complicated right i just want to understand in the chat section if you guys can let me know how many of you are from the tech uh, you know you have tech businesses versus traditional businesses non tech businesses just type tech for tech and non tech for non tech so i'll cater my slides accordingly non tech non tech okay mostly non tech Hmm. Non tech, but going tech. Yes, even restaurant businesses need tech, right? Everybody needs tech. Tech, very interested in tech. Okay, good. Okay, this is a good. In- okay, so I can talk about tech. You will not fall asleep if I talk about tech. That's good to know. All right. Ah, uh-huh. moving on. overuse of technology or underestimate uh, customer acquisition cost so a lot of times people are like uh, go to market strategy kya hai aapka oh acha facebook ads google ads chala lenge digital marketing ho jayega now let me give an example cost of customer acquisition can go from uh, anywhere between 20 rupees to 120 rupees right so let's say an app you want to download anywhere between 100 to 300 rupees per download facebook will charge you right there's a reason why make my trip and book my show and all these apps give you 500 rupees uh, for just downloading that app why because people don't want to download apps uh, and you have to really give them an incentive to do that right um, and even after downloading they might uninstall it so the point is is very expensive to get people to download your app that's where growth hacking comes in you cannot just expect facebook and google you just pay through so imagine this if 100 rupees is your Uh, app download or or uh, you know con- customer conversion uh, cost if you want a million people to use your product right you're talking about 100 million dollars just for marketing just for ads that doesn't work so just to give an example right referrals so oyo when it started oyo was very heavily depending on referrals 
So you come and use the OYO room and you refer somebody else, you get OYO cash, somebody else gets OYO cash. Same thing with they followed from Dropbox. I don't know how many of you use Dropbox, but Dropbox did the same thing. Initially, they were looking at Google ads. So $99 was annual subscription fee and Google was charging them $110 uh, for customer acquisitions. So they're like, we're losing money, right? How do we get this? How do we get this right? So they said, okay, if you refer somebody, you get 500 MB and your friend gets 500 MB. In two years, Dropbox had explosive growth. They became a $10 billion company, 10 billion, right? In two years without spending money on marketing. It was basically growth hacking, building their product in a way that people refer and through referrals, they grew, incentivizing their customers into marketers. So investors want to hear these kind of smart things that you're going to do to, to customer acquisition. Don't just say digital marketing. I hear this all the time. Traditional business thinking. So generally speaking though, and most of you are from traditional background. So what happens is, you know, we are used to you give money, you get money. You put money and there's a little uh, commission in the middle or a little profit you make. Uh, today's technology is very diff different. Technology is cheap. So for example, um, during this lockdown, one of the boosts that happened was education industry. Yes, schools and colleges are shut down, but guess what? People like yourselves, you know, at the age between 40 to, to 50 to 60, you guys have amazing knowledge over the last decade or, or more. So what people are doing is, okay, I don't want to do this job anymore, or I'm working from home. I have two hours extra because I don't have to commute. So they're like, I'll consult. I'll create a course. So let's say somebody is very good with solar power right? They'll be like, this is how you build a solar business. And they make 10 modules, they record their video, they launch the course, they put up Facebook ads, and that's it. Zero money investment, just Facebook ads you're running. While you're sleeping, people are buying your course, and you make it once for the rest of your life, you're earning money. Rest of your life, right? This applies to each one of you because you all have expertise in your own domains. So you record the course and you're done. So people are making... I was just talking to this guy named Deepak Kankaraju from Chennai, I think. And he said he makes 30 lakhs a month just from his courses. Right. And that's a substantial amount of money. So what I'm trying to say here is there's a technology is very cheap. You can get a lot from very less. So I'll give you another example that I'm involved in. So most of you are above 35. So aap logo pata hoga shayad the brand called Iowa, right? Iowa TV, Iowa Walkman, 13, 14 years ago, there used to be this brand that was owned by Sony, Japanese brand. So Sony knows ko chhod diya tha. So three, four years ago, one of my mentors in Chicago, usne wo brand khareed liya Iowa for 1.8 million dollars. So usne khareed ke China jaake he made this uh, very. I have some of the speakers, you know, massive speakers, right? That are wireless speakers, party speakers, really good sound, better than Bose almost. And he had 400 speakers, right? He manufactured them, got them to Chicago, and I said, "Avello, I'm bankrupt." Please help me sell them. I said, Joe, don't worry. You don't have to spend a single dime. We'll get you there. So what did I do? I uh, gave those speakers to YouTubers, people who do YouTube reviews. So free speaker. They made videos. Here is a JBL speaker. Here is a Bose speaker. Here is an Iowa speaker. This is so much better than those guys. You, know, it's, you can carry it to the beach. You can do parties, whatnot, whatnot. They have millions of followers. We give them a little code, right? Affiliate code. So their followers click on their code, go to Amazon, buy our speakers. In eight weeks, we went from zero to selling $25,000 worth of speakers a week. A week, right? Zero money spent. Literally zero money spent. So what I'm trying to say here is, the traditional mindset is, oh, we have to invest in everything. Oh, we have to get everything right before going to market, right? And the modern way, the lean startup way of thinking is just build a minimum viable product that is imperfect, solve a dire enough problem, and then solve it with technology. Get it out there, get feedback, and fix it as you go, as you sell, right? That's the idea, whether it's a digital or a physical product. Some questions here, but use of technology in our business, non tech Okay, got it. All right. Okay. Traditional business thinking, valuation, funding, and huh. so one of the things that investors are well, 
the main thing an investor is looking for from, from all of you uh, or, or a startup is how you're going to help me grow my money. Right. So a lot of times we think about our business more than we think about the investor. But uh, all, obviously all of you are, uh, you know, know the sales process in the sales process. You have to think about who the other person, you know, who the other person is. So you have to think about them. So when you're talking your whole pitch deck, your storytelling is about this is how your money will grow. This is how my business will grow and help you get 20 X. So and a professional investor looks for nothing less than 20 X return on investment in a matter of three to five years, right? Very important to understand. Two zero X return on investment. Otherwise it's not worth it. Why do they want so much? Because 90% failure rate. Now here is the good news. I think all of you are above 40. So here is a research 90% failure rate applies to 20 to 30 year olds. But when you're 40, you are, you know, it comes down to 50%. When you're 50, it comes down to 45%. When you're 60, it comes down to 30% failure rate. That means 70% likely to succeed. I was in Kerala, uh, but invited by the government of Kerala. I was in three cities and these are all tier two cities. Uh, there was uh, Kochi, uh, um, I cannot even remember the names, but the point is they had literally startups that were making several crores a month. Each one of them run by 40, 50, 60 year olds, right? Not teenagers, not college kids, but people who have actually been in the industry have uh, built businesses in a traditional way and now have shifted over to tech focused, tech enabled, scalable businesses. Okay. Uh, so, so that's where really investors also understand that. So they get very excited when they see gray hair, when they see people who are experienced. So you guys have all the advantage over uh, uh, younger folks. Okay. So um, we'll go deeper into valuation exit strategy later on in the slides. Let me just get through. So when is a good time to, to get investors? So here are the stages of a, of a company right? Uh, the customer discovery phase for you, the pre-seed stage. So you get pre-seed funding, right? Uh, so where, where you're just idea, some validation is there. Uh, the founders are great. So sometimes if the founders are really great with good experience in business, investors don't need too much validation. They're like, Achha, chalo, you have built a crore plus business. You're worth, uh, you know, trusting because you will be able to execute on it. So this pre-seed, then there is seed stage, right? Where you have customers, some validation is coming through, right? And then onwards, so there's now you're talking from between 25 lakhs to a crore. Then you get to early stage where you're in the million dollar phase. You know, you're investing anywhere between a million to three million dollars. So seven crores to 21 crores, right? And uske baad, you know, now what happens is at this stage, people make a mistake. People think, achha chalo scale karte. Abhi Chennai bahut ho gaya, abhi hum Bangalore, uh, uh, maybe Ahmedabad, maybe Mumbai will scale. And premature scaling leads to failure because kya hota hai? you don't have uh, the, the critical mass. You don't have enough customers in one region. You've not become the king of one region. You need to monopolize one market first. Or uske baad jo referrals aata hai, that helps you spill over to other cities. But if you prematurely scale, you will fall, right? Because you're spending so much money in operations and the revenues don't uh, make up for the operation. And then investors see that you're uh, burning money, you're inefficient company, they're scared of you, right? So don't prematurely scale. You get the $3 million funding, use it in one geography and really become the king of that market, that niche, really own that niche. If it is uh, uh, real estate, if it is uh, agri-tech, if it is restaurant tech, if it is healthcare, whatever niche, narrow, 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 niche, 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 become the king and then slowly grow. Like Amazon started with books, and now they sell A to Z, everything, right? Uh, so similarly, start with one thing, do that really, really well for a niche targeted audience, then slowly grow from there, right? Okay, get the point. And expansion and there you go. So where is a good time to get investors? Once you have a little bit of value, validation that yes, I have built something, I have proved something, there is traction, right? And there onwards, you get the investor. So start with zero money, maybe a little bit more than zero, uh, depending on the business. Grow, grow with customers' money. Show traction. Show there's customers. I can bring in customers. With my own effort, I'm bringing so many customers. With the investor's money, I can get so much more. So help the investor visualize it that, Acha, 
खुद के बल पे दे हैव बीन एबल टू डू सो मच अगर मैं आ जाता हूं आई कैन नॉट ओनली पुट इन मनी बट आई कैन ऑल्सो ओपन डोर फॉर दम राइट आई कैन ओपन अपॉर्चुनिटीज जो इनके पास नहीं है शायद इन लोगों को पता भी नहीं है कि गवर्नमेंट से इतना पैसा आ रहा है इतना ग्रांट मिल रहा है मुझे यू नो आई कैन हेल्प दम विद दैट मे बी मेरा दोस्त विजय शेखर शर्मा है तो मैं एक पेटीएम से कनेक्ट कर दूंगा एंड दे कैन गेट सम इन्वेस्टमेंट फ्रॉम देर दे कैन गेट सम अपॉर्चुनिटीज सो इन्वेस्टर इज नॉट जस्ट अज ब्रिंग इन मनी बट ऑल्सो अपॉर्चुनिटीज ओपनिंग अप doors for you so scaling is what you do with investors money generally speaking because then you can negotiate ki bhai you need to grow your money i need to grow my business we both need each other let's talk equal to equal not like i'm a beggar give me money no you need me i need you let's negotiate a a, a term that we both agree on that's fair to both of us and and we go from there okay all right so first thing is your your pitch deck that starts with is problem and i i want to uh, uh, go into this because the first thing that an investor will ask you uh, generally speaking is what problem are you solving in the market and it's important that your problem is is strong enough because everything will be deduced from that problem statement right uh, and you know from the vedic definition uh, veda say problem is something that no one wants but everyone has to face it and no one can avoid it like death old age disease everyone has to face it no one can avoid it and you know it's just something that no one wants to deal with but if you can solve those problems if you see the pharmaceutical industry growing so much during corona uh, the healthcare the the old age senior care all these industries are growing because severe problem lot of money right so here is the example of a pitch deck from airbnb which is uh, as you know is a unicorn uh, in the hotel business oyo is kind of like a copy of airbnb not really but similar business model so they give three problem statements this is what we are solving right and that's where the investor pitch deck really starts is the problem that i'm solving um if i had more time i would have you uh, write down your problem statement for your business but if you have time it's absolutely worthwhile writing down a 30 word problem statement the reason why i said 30 words is because it's easy to talk a lot about problems it's tough to put that thought down into 30 words right so but when you put that thought so i have done this where i have I given people 10 minutes i given people 4 hours also to just write the perfect problem statement kya hota hai isme aapko deep dive karna padta hai khud ke business model mein customer ki jo psychology hota hai उसमें कि क्या रियली चाहिए कस्टमर को जैसे हेनरी फोर्ड ने जब पूछा था लोगों को कि आ, क्या कैसा व्हीकल्स चाहिए आप लोगों को एंड पीपल सेड वी इन सफ टू हॉर्स बगी वी वांट सिक्स हॉर्स बगी हेनरी फोर्ड ने सुना दे वांट स्पीड दे वांट मोर पावर एंड ही सेड हॉर्सेस के वजह आई विल राधर डू मोटर कार्स राइट एंड द फोर्ड मोटर कंपनी वॉज बॉर्न सो द पॉइंट इज एज अंटरप्रिनर you have to hear the customer you have to feel their pain ki iska inka problem jo hai this is their problem so once you understand the problem now translating that problem into solution is your magic right that's where i cannot help but you have to figure out ki i think this is how i'm going to solve it in the best possible way and that's where it all begins that's where your you know so problem is very very important so do spend some time if you have a uh, 30 words problem statement when you have uh, you know after this session today is sunday best to do it and the next thing i will now ask you to actually uh, do it um it's very easy just one line right so xyz llc or private limited company helps dash to dash by dash right so for example kolkata ventures helps entrepreneurs to build and grow hack their business by using lean startup methodology so we do a lot more you know lot more things but in one line when we are networking with people they ask you what does kolkata ventures do this is what we do so also in your pitch deck when you have a solution slide you don't want to write everything you just want to write one line so i just want to see if uh, you anybody can share a one line of your company using this formula you know your company name helps dash that means your demographic to whatever problem you're solving for them by what means in the chat section if you don't mind you know just typing uh, this one line if you can about your business 
Jagdish Sarda, willing to work and scale up business with tech, but not connect with right advisors who can understand our strength and guide next. Um, I think that's, that's a statement, but I'm talking about this solution. So what does your company do in one line? If you can fill up this uh, gap and just share. I'll get you Jagdish uh, Ji, I'll be happy to uh, help you. No problem. Fashion industry. Oh, very interesting. Hmm. Okay. I will not spend too much time. If you, huh, okay. Brain skills help students to enhance their logical skills. Okay. By, by what? Using apps, using uh, video calling, using South Korean, uh, you know, techniques of learning, whatever. So you get the point, right? I'm not going to spend too much time. It's 11.48. Okay. But a uh, very good exercise to actually do, because again, this makes you think as an entrepreneur and think from the investor's perspective as well. Right. Uh, okay. Rajesh Bhatt is saying helps packing foods for restaurants in takeaway by way of food containers. Okay. Fantastic. All right. And as you uh, go through, you know, the investor pitch deck, as you're building the pitch deck, you will get better and better. You know, some investors will be like, sorry, not interested. And so you will get a lot of rejections initially and eventually you'll learn, okay, this is where I'm going wrong. And you'll get better and better. And with your pitch deck, your problem statements, your solution, your business model, go to market strategy, etc., etc. So, uh, but till you come to a point where you can really brag about your business and you need to brag, you cannot be humble here, right? So people know about unique selling proposition, you know, USP, what is the USP of your business? But more important is what is a unique bragging proposition about your business? Because investors should be able to brag to other investors. But invest kiya? they are a great technology. They are uh, mining cryptocurrency in space using solar uh, energy. Oh, wow, really? Right? So there has to be some spice, some masala into your startup also. It cannot be dal chawal. It has to be some way of biryani. Right? Either the team is fantastic or the technology is fantastic or the intellectual property is great or the customers you have is great, you know, or, or some traction that you have is great. So have something that you can immediately wow the investors like, you know what, these are the highlights that we have done. Now you got their attention. They're going to listen to all your 30 slides, right? But if you're just going boring, you know, uh, we had this and 20 years of business and we have done da, 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 da. We were like WhatsApp wife's calling and what not, what not. So don't lose their focus. Give them the highlights, show them you know, you, your unique bragging proposition, brag about it, get them to watch the rest of the presentation, right? That's very, very key because you do all this hard work. If they don't even watch it, don't hear you. It's all a wasted effort. Um, I'm not going to go too much into it. You can just see my screen. Uh, some experts have put together this list companies, uh, that are in a lot of trouble during the lockdown, uh, during the Corona period and companies that are uh, potentially doing very, very well. Having said that, uh, one of our startups in the travel and tourism business, whatever losses they made in the six months, they made up for it in August itself. Uh, uh, I wish I would, could tell you the story. It's really funny, but I would, uh, we don't have time, but this is kind of like the overall strategy, but doesn't mean that if you're in this uh, business, you cannot, uh, you know, go from bust to boom. It depends on your business model innovation. If you can fix your business model in line with COVID problems, you will do well. Okay. Maybe I'll share the story because it'll help you. So travel and tourism, everybody knows is down, right? OYO and all, everybody's uh, firing people and whatnot. So one of our incubated startups, they're called Brevi Stay. Uh, what they do is they take five star hotels and they sell uh, rooms uh, for two hours, six hours, nine hour periods. Their initial intention was ki chalo business travelers, they need to freshen up. They get off the train or, or plane, they need to freshen up two hours in a faster hotel and then they go to their meeting. Turns out it was most popular with teenagers and young adults for you can imagine what, right? Uh, so now given lockdown, everybody's so frustrated. So Pratik is telling me, sir, it, whatever we lost in six months, August and September, we made up for it because it's not travelers who are going to these hotels. It's the people from the city because they're so frustrated with being in lockdown mode that they're going crazy on Tinder. And then the next stage is in the hotel rooms, right? And two hours, six hours bookings are through the roof. And they're saying, uh, October, we will, we are projecting 30% more than March that we had. 
So they have aligned themselves with COVID problems. And even though they're in the tour and uh, travel business, they're actually booming. Uh, and the hotels love them. Okay. I hope I've not offended anyone's uh, uh, views, but this is just to give you a story to see how some people can innovate. Even if you're in the bust phase, you can align your problem with COVID-19 and make money. All right. Scalable business. I'll skip through this. Uh, so one of the things you need to understand is that the, the cost of your business grows linearly as you're growing, but scalability means exponential growth. That's what the investor is looking for. So you need to show your data in a way the investor can see, although you're in the red, you are exponentially growing that your customers are, you can see here, your customers are referring other customers because there is value in your product or service. And that way you're growing exponentially month on month, year by year, there's an exponential growth. So that means you will be eventually profitable. So you're close to critical mass or, or not, but you will be eventually profitable. And if you choose not to be profit profitable, that means you choose to increase the angle of this line. So you can actually make the cost more by pushing more marketing dollars, making more losses like all these people like Flipkart and Uber. And, and they, they choose to be loss making because they're pushing more money into getting more customers, pushing more money into getting uh, uh, you know, the, the, the cost high, but the valuation is so high because uh, you know, the investors can see that if they stop today, putting in so much money into marketing, they will be profitable. Uh, the net present value of their businesses if from three to five years, if you see the revenue projected, net present value shows that they can be profitable right now, but they choose not to be. They choose to accelerate their growth. As a result, they're pushing in money and showing the losses and, and going, uh, you know, growing massively, right? So, but you need to show the matrices, the projections, the financials to the investor in a way that they can envision that exponential growth is possible with your business. Um, of course, there's a very simplified version of that. So say you put a million dollars for 12 months and you can break it down. This is what our goal is. This is how many transactions we will have. This is how our subscription will work. And this is how we intend to capture the market. So let's say 5,000 people, uh, $17 per month for 12 months. So 2,000 we will capture with uh, uh, digital marketing. 2,000 will be through influencers. And 1,000 we will go through our own referrals of our own customers uh, uh, with our uh, product uh, referral uh, model, right? So investor understands, okay, this is how you've broken it down. This is how you will capture the market. Makes sense, right? It, not saying it will be the, exactly how you're saying it. Investor knows, you also know. It's the best, uh, best guess. Uh, you know, it's a guesstimation, but at least you've thought through it. You've broken it down. You have a plan for it. Let's talk about the category of investors. Obviously there's friends, family fools, right? Uh, the three F's. So people who love you, that's why they invest in your business. But then the crowdfunding aspect is very, very powerful. So just to give you an example, um, if you're building a new product or if you're building a restaurant, I'll give you two nice examples. Uh, Mr. Uh, Navneet, I just want to ask, is the time really, really like strict or can I take like five, 10 minutes extra? Uh, absolutely. So please go with your flow. Okay. Uh, so I'll give you two examples of crowdfunding because this is, m many of you might not know about this. So what it basically is, so initially it was angel investors and venture capitalists, right? So they have all the money they get to negotiate. But then uh, in the US, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, these companies, what they did was anybody should be able to invest. So one of my mentees, uh, she was like, okay, here's the iPhone at the bottom. There are two speakers. So you take the coffee cup mug, you know, Starbucks coffee cup mug, the lid, you cut it out, you put it below the iPhone. And she made a video with that showing, look, when you have something like this, it sounds so much louder. Uh, if you give me your money, I'm going to go to China, have a plastic product made that you can just connect your iPhone when you're listening to music and it will sound like a loudspeaker. She just made a video. She wanted $10,000. Guess how much she raised? $330,000. She went to China, made the product. She had customers even before she had the product, right? So those people were like, here's $10, here's $50, here's $500, here's $300, right? Take the money. I want four of these products. I want three of these products. So before even she went to market, she already had buyers. She went to China with their money, built the product, shipped the money. 
to the product. The point is that's crowdfunding. Second example I'll give you. Uh, this is a little X rated. Please forgive me. I hope I don't offend anyone. This is in London. Three guys had a great idea. We want to start a restaurant. They said, okay, we have so much money that we can do down payment, kar sakte, but not enough money to buy the chairs, tables, decoration, etc. What do we do? So they were like, let's make it viral. How do we make it viral? Bana so they thought, okay, you know what? We're going to have something unique about our restaurant. What is unique? We're going to allow people to come here and eat naked. Really? People would want that? Yes. And it will be all not fat people. It will be people with a certain body mass index. So they floated it on social media. They sold 45,000 tickets at 60 pounds each, right? 60 pounds each, 45,000. So you do the math. They had that money before they opened up the restaurant. With that money, they opened the restaurant. And the day of the opening, there was a line outside uh, their hotel. I was in London uh, last year, March. I didn't go to the hotel. Don't worry. Uh, I just asked one of my friends, how is that hotel doing? And they said, there are already three of them. They're, they're a franchisee now, right? It's growing like leaps and bounds. So what I'm going to say here is, uh, they put in a little bit of money for, for down payment, but the rest was crowdfunded by people who see value in the idea. And these are not investors. These are just normal people who just found a platform and they're putting it. So we know GoFundMe. Somebody has cancer. Somebody cannot pay for their disease. There's GoFundMe. So one of our incubated startups, crowdpouch.com, they have opened it up for startups. So you have a great product. You have a speaker. You have a, a business idea. Make a video, put it on the platform, and people in general will you know, pour in the money. So they have around 600 investors who are pouring in thousands of dollars every month at good ideas. Now, the point is, if the idea goes nowhere, they get nothing. If something happens, they get a unique product that they can show off to their friends. Look, look what I got. You will not find it on Amazon. I have it, right? Fine. That's the reason. But that's how crowdfunding works. And then comes uh, angel investors, people who are high net worth individuals who are individually in investing in companies. So they're like, you know what? Uh, I'll put in between 25 lakhs to a crore or up to three crores. That's where angel investors come in. There's angel tax and I'm not getting into the details, but uh, individuals investing. Then comes venture capital. Venture capital means uh, you are raising money for your fund. You might or might not be an investor in that fund, but you're raising money from other people. And there is generally a 10 year, the saal ka period hota hai. Jaapar, you have a 10 year key. We invest in the same companies, 90% will fail, but 10% those who will succeed will make up for the 90% and more. So venture capitalists are a how do I say, brutish, hota hai, right? I don't know the Hindi for it, but they have a gun in their hands. Because especially if they're close to the, the end of their uh, uh, fund period, they have a gun in their hands. If they're at the beginning of the fund period, they're more relaxed and experimental. So, uh, if you want to go to VCK, you can research that where are they where are they in their 10-year uh, uh, period. And accordingly, you can understand how desperate they are or how experimental they are, right? But the point is, they are answerable to their investors who are standing with a gun on their head. So, they stand with a gun on the investor's head to make sure there's enough boost, enough push. Uh, but in me, kya hota? there's also the, the scary part of investors being so much so pushy that the entrepreneurs under pressure make mistakes and the both of them fail. The startup also goes down, investors money also goes down and both fail. So when you're dealing with venture capitalists, you have to be very strong. And you have to say, I know the market. I'm talking to the market every day. So trust me, you've trusted me with the money. Trust me to grow the money. Sometimes, of course, you can listen to them if they know what they're talking about. But a lot of times, the reason why venture backed companies fail is because the venture capitalists who might have inherited their parents' money, who might have uh, 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 not even known about your business, they're real estate guys talking to a doctor who is expert in cancer cure, telling him, I think this is how you should do it. And obviously, you know, uh, uh, if you listen to the money guy under fear, uh, you will fail. So you have to be very strong with the venture capitalists. Good venture capitalists are not like that. They say, you know what? I'm a partner. You have your co-founders. I'm also a partner in your business. Let's grow together rather than let me tell you what to do. So be aware of, of that aspect of venture capital. 
if you are becoming a venture capitalist, uh, don't be like that. Uh, you know, I have been very fortunate to have my investors who have always been supportive, but I have heard horror stories of venture capitalists destroying businesses. Corporate investors, these are very, very uh, important aspects. Just like I said, if you have a digital business, hai, aapka jo bhi, so all these Amazon ventures, Google ventures, Xiaomi ventures, uh, Samsung ventures, all these guys not only give you money, but they give you so much more than money because they want to grow through you. Because they're so big, they cannot do a lot of things that you can do as a, a, a smaller size business, right? So for example, Amazon, so I, I was talking to Samsung, I told you, I'll tell you about Samsung story. So when I went there, they had all my phone, laptop, every speaker, microphone, uh, camera, wherever, the, tape, 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 tape. Kya itna secret hai? Then they said, okay, you know, we don't want everybody to know about this. <laughs> Are you recording me? But anyway, uh, they're like, we make more money by selling data than we do by selling phones. We can in fact give the phones for free. We don't care because we know where you're going through your GPS location. We are tracking you. We know what you're listening to, what music you love. We know where you're banking. We know what apps you have, what social media app you spend the most time on. And we sell all this data to Google, Amazon, Facebook. And that's where we make our money. So if any startup you have in Kolkata Ventures that want our investment, Please know we will not only give money, we'll also give you the data to make you more powerful. So your artificial intelligence is more intelligent because of our data. Here is what we want. We are sick and tired of YouTube, Google, uh, all these software companies making money sitting on our hardware platform, right? We are making the hardware and they're making money. That's not fair. We want to make our own ecosystem and that's where it's all going, right? These hardware companies are building their own ecosystem where they want you exclusively. They're willing to fund you. They will, and they want to capture tier two, tier three cities. Right? People are willing to spend money on, on entertainment, but all they have is geo. So they can spend their OTT platforms, but not uh, a pantaloons or a, or a Zara or, or whatever else. If, a, if, if one of these stores open up, so I was just talking to some of you know about Calcutta. So there's a place called Sirampur, which is a little suburb, uh, a little far away from Calcutta. So I was talking to the regional head of pantaloons. He said, you know, we have three stores in Calcutta and we thought the Sirampur store wouldn't do too well, but that one store in Sirampur makes more money than three stores in Calcutta because those guys have the hunger. We want to be like an urban person, right? We want to dress like them. We want to dress like Bollywood stars. So they spend more money than they earn and we love it. So all these other companies, you know, Amazon and, and uh, these phone companies and everybody wants to get to tier two, tier three cities. They want to have their apps in Hindi and Marathi and uh, Tamil and whatnot because they want to capture the non-English speaking crowd because they have money, but nothing has been catered to them. Underserved market, right? Okay. Moving on to the last uh, kind of investor, which is the banks and government. So there's Atal Incubation Centers, there's Fund of Funds, 10,000 crores uh, available from uh, the government, which is Fund of Funds means there are certain venture capital firms. If they invest a crore, government of India will invest another crore and your state government might invest a 50 lakhs. So for one crore, uh, the same valuation you're giving, you get two and a half crores, right? Uh, so that's the kind of beauty you have. If you have uh, VCs, that are connected to the fund of funds by Startup India, uh, Government of India. So these are the different kinds of investors. <sighs> investors, what are they looking for? One of the biggest things they're looking for is you as a founder, as a promoter, and your fund, founding team, your, your, your executing team people who are equity holders in the company, directors and whatnot, who are they? What is their background? Now, fortunate for you, I know all of you are accomplished uh, businessmen. So that's a great, uh, you got the first part covered. You already have the trust of the investor. In fact, some of your friends might be investing in you because they already know you for years. You've done good business. You've shown the traction. Given COVID-19, you might want to uh, shift your business from traditional to a little bit modern. You might want to automate your systems within, fire a few employees, right? You might want to include technology to increase scalability and profitability in your business. Great. Yeah, and, and you have the credibility for it because you know the business in and out. You know the market in and out. So that's one of the things that investors are looking for. Next comes, like I said, product market fit. Is your product for the right market? Can you show validation that yes, there is people who are uh, not only using your product, but referring their friends. 
uh, they're spending enough time, they're repeat buyers, right? So there's some traction that you have to showcase. Um, geographical proximity doesn't matter anymore thanks to the pandemic, uh, but still uh, people, some investors still tend to be like, I want to see what you're doing. I want you to be in my city, right? Uh, but a lot of them are like, I don't care. I'm in Gurgaon, you're in Chennai, fine, no problem. As long as we meet on Zoom, uh, once every three months, we are doing our audits and whatnot, we are happy, right? Uh, <clears throat> scalability. This is very, very important. Are you scalable? That's what an investor is looking for. Uh, I'm not okay with a 2x return. Now, if you're an angel investor, you're totally okay with 2x, 3x return. You know, mera paisa double kar do, triple kar do, ek do saal mein, I'm very happy. But if you're a venture capitalist, you want 20x return. Uh, and the venture capitalist will actually buy out the angel investor. So I know many of you want to be investors, right? So the best part for the best exit for you is you come in as an early stage at the idea stage or at the very early traction stage, uh, but you get bought out by the guy who's coming at a 10 crore, uh, uh, you know, uh, valuation. And they'll be like, you know what? I'm going to double your money. Please get out. I want your equity. And you were like, thank you very much. I don't need more. I'm moving out. Or you can say, you know what? I want to stay out and I want to grow my money. I am happy to wait for five to seven years. No problem. Right. Either way, it's your choice. But small investors have that flexibility. Big investors want to come and take more and they give you that exit. Big investors get the exit when the company gets bought out or there is IPO or there's any other kind of acquisition, aqua hire. If you don't know these terminologies, it's, you can just Google them. But in short, basically a Facebook or a Google comes and buys you out. There's different reasons to buy you out. One could be like, for example, WhatsApp. Right. The guys wanted to get a job in Facebook. Facebook said, no, thank you. They went and built WhatsApp and Facebook realized everybody who hates Facebook is on WhatsApp. They're like, Achha, we want everybody to be on a platform. Let's just buy out WhatsApp. That way we got everybody covered in social media space. So Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook. So Facebook is reading what all you're texting your friends. Facebook is reading what are pictures you're sharing on Instagram. Now they know they can tell the advertisers, Achha, this guy, he, uh, he's talking about Domino's pizza. Why don't you Domino's go and uh, or, or give them some discount and they'll buy your pizza because Facebook is hearing you also. If you, uh, there's a Netflix uh, uh, video, I'm sure many of you might have seen it, uh, the Delaba, uh, forget uh, what Delaba, but yeah, that's a very, very eye opening thing where how these tech companies are gathering information about you, right? Anyway, so, uh, so these are the different kinds of investors and they're looking for scalability, they're looking for the growth hacking aspect in your go-to-market strategy. That means how are you going to grow, get customers without spending too much money? So yes, you can spend money on ads, but where are the organic ways you're going to also grow, right? Uh, where are the traditional digital models, physical and digital combination? What are you innovating? How are you getting referrals, right? All of that is part of your go-to-market strategy. Timeline for execution. But Kya kya hai abhi tak? What have you done so far? And ki, kya karne wale hai aap? Main aapko 10 crore dene wala hu. To ye paisa leke next 18 months mein kya kya aapka milestones jo hai? Kya kya aap dikhayenge humko? Kisko kab hire karenge? Uh, kitne uh, 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 customers aayenge? How many transactions will happen? What is your timeline for execution? How are you going to grow? Uh, uh, a scalability, you know, whether you're going to scale at what time, at what trigger point? All of that is part of your timeline for execution. Use of funds. Uh, so they want to know, Ki, achha, chalo, paisa to hum de rahe, but ye paisa kaise aap kaha par allocate karoge, right? So people, so investors want to see that their money grows the company. Uh, sare times hota hai ki, operation intensive business hota hai. To us samay jo hai, jo professional investors jo hai, they get a little scared ki, bhai, you're getting a big office. You're spending so much money on human resource. You're spending so much money on this, that, that is actually inefficient use of my money. I want you to grow the business, get more customers, grow the valuation and get me out of it. Right. I don't care about you having a fancy looking executive assistant. Right. Uh, just give you a, give you a raw example. But what I'm trying to say here is investors want to see how you're allocating the funds so they can see that. Yes, you're growing the business rather than you're just putting it into a, a, a black hole right? Where it's just, you're going to need more. So what, what happens is people who are very much into technology and operations, they're like, Chalo, both infrastructure may put uh, kar dete money ko. So what happens then is like, okay, but still no profitability. So then you got the strong infrastructure. Now you'll come back again for more money. And the investor is going to be like, uh, well, you know, I already gave you money. You're not shown any traction. You put that into a black hole and now you want more money. I don't know if you still can execute and grow my money. 
right? That problem happens. So you have to be very careful and showcase. Uh, I'll show you some um, industry standards for allocation of funds, but fund allocation is a very important aspect of the fund ask. Um, uh, financial projection, obviously, is the educated guess. Everybody knows what the investor cares about is what are your assumptions behind these educated guesses and how are you thinking about how uh, the projections will happen? Uh, best case, worst case scenario. Exit strategy, you know, how am I going to get my money back? I already covered exit strategy, so I'm not going to spend so much. If you don't remember anything from that last slide, remember this. Credible team, capable of execution. If you got the credible team capable of execution, you got half the battle you already won. Because if the team is right and the team is willing to listen, investors know that it's much easier to get them to succeed. If the team is proud, arrogant, uh, not easy to work with, even though if it is very excellent in skills, investors know they will not listen, they will die. These are the different um, teams, you know, so we're talking about teams. So these are people you need in your company. Obviously the co-founders, the executive team, the outsource team, your accountants or your legal team or whatever. Board of advisors gives you a lot of credit, especially when you're going to investors. They might have never heard of you. So one of the things the investors will be looking for is who do I know in the board? either board of directors or board of advisors. Ah, I know that person. Oh, he's on your board. The next thing they'll do is call up that person. Hey, bhai, kya hai? are you involved with that startup? Achha, kya hai in ka background kya hai? Achha hai? Potential in me? Achha. Okay, good, good, good. And then they'll be like, hmm, it's worth investing in because I see those faces on your board of advisors. So it's very important to have that level of credibility. If you're not a brand already, right? If you're a brand, then the fantastic, no problem. People know you and, and you're very easily sellable. But if you're not known, then get people who are known in the industry who say, you know what, trust me, I trust them. And that's why investors are like, Achha, good. If you trust them and your brain is involved here, then I trust you. So I'll invest. Obviously it's not so simple, but it's one of the criterions that help investors make a choice. Many times the board of advisors actually become investors, right? That is also there. Interns, don't forget interns in our country, uh, cheap labor or free labor, one certificate and they'll do a lot of the grunt work, a lot of the research work. You need to find those investors. You know, you can uh, unleash the interns on LinkedIn, F success, angel list. They'll find you the best investors possible. And then you can curate, ki, Achha, these ones I really like. These are the good profiles, good backgrounds. Right. One of the things I have seen, and I don't mean to offend anyone, is investors who have never built a business, uh, either they're CXOs in big companies, get a lot of uh, salary, or investors who have inherited a lot of money from their parents but never worked hard to build their own money, tend to cause a lot of trouble. They come and they tell the entrepreneurs, they make their lives very difficult. I'm generalizing, it's not everybody is like that, but that has been the case in a lot of businesses I've seen. And eventually the, either the, uh, the entrepreneur loses, you know, the, the excitement of being in a startup and they just leave or they end up not performing very well. So please know that if that you see, uh, I, I don't want to name anyone, but I've seen horrible cases where people who have no clue come and destroy businesses and it's their own investment that they're destroying. But that happens a lot when they have no clue about startups. So it's always a good idea to go for an investor who understands your business, whether startups or not. They understand your industry, they understand your business, they understand how the market works. And those guys, they will be okay with your initial failures. They will not come to you with a gun because they'll be like, Pata hai, aisa hi hota hai. you know what, just keep going, I'm here to support you. Right? Versus the other guy will be like, oh my God, kya hua? Aise kaise ho gaya? Aapne promise kiya tha pitch deck mein, ki aap dikhayenge itna return on investment, abhi kya ho raha hai? Right? So you want to stay away from those troublemakers. Uh, anyway, so these are great places to find these investors. Uh, most investors probably would have a website. So there they talk about their criterion for investment. They have a form. You can probably approach them from that angle and follow up on LinkedIn directly with them. I followed your process. I went through your website, but I also wanted to touch base with you because I think you and I will really make a good team. Your investment, my company, I think it's a good match. Let's talk. Let's get on a five minute phone call. And, uh, and if you're interested, we can make that into a 15 minute pitch and, and let's go from there.
right? Small ask, uh, boost to the ego and, and go with it. It's very important you boost egos. Uh, you appreciate them because you know, as an investor, they're used to that and they like that. And any human being, not just an investor, right? Any human being would like to be appreciated. So if they are active on LinkedIn, just tell them I love your posts. You know, so the first email or message shouldn't be, hey, I want your money. Can I have your wallet, please? And I see this happen all the time, right? Don't do that. Just appreciate, glorify, tell them, hey, would love to pick your brain. You're such an expert in this domain. Would you kindly help me, you know, with five minutes of your time? And then while they're getting emotionally invested in you, slowly pull them in to your business, show them how awesome your highlights, your unique bragging proposition. And then they'll be only excited. They'll be like, do you know any friends that you have who might be interested in my business? Yeah, why not? Why not me? I'll be happy to look at your business. Let me see. Right. And that's how you pull them in slowly, slowly. Don't be too direct. Don't be too indirect either. It's like dating. You know, you got to kind of try it out, figure it out where to go, what to do, you know, and, and you'll, you'll see the uh, uh, results, but be, be careful, be soft. Okay. All right. Done with this, uh, social media, just to tell you in a small anecdote, uh, Uber founders, Travis and Ryan actually met on Twitter. Uh, this was the exact tweet that they had, right? R Travis was looking for somebody with marketing background, biz dev background, and, uh, Ryan lost his job that day. And both of them met on Twitter and became co-founders and built a multi-billion dollar company. So don't underestimate social media. If you're not on social media, if you're not on LinkedIn, please get there, start interacting, adding friends, adding content and, and get involved. So people know you exist when they know you exist, they will be uh, more willing to work with you. Um, just give me one second. So these are the different kinds of uh, pitch categories uh, that are there. So there's elevator pitch, um, which is not very common in India, really. It's more in the US where it's 90 seconds. You have to pitch your idea. You know, that one liner I told you, so-and-so LLC does this for this by this. That's the elevator pitch. Uh, five minute pitch is very common. If you are uh, going to NASCOM or if you're coming to entrepreneur uh, magazine events, those pitches are generally five minutes. And this is when the investor really wants to know highlights about you. Uh, once you get those five minutes, get their excitement, then they'll call them, call you to their office or they'll have a more 20 minute kind of a conversation. And if that goes well, then comes the due diligence, going through a business model and details, going through any intellectual property. If you have going through team details, going through all the, you know, the company history, uh, financials, the, the spreadsheets, they'll look through things in more details. And if all of that goes well, they'll do a little background search to make sure you don't have any criminal or, uh, you know, black money kind of thing involved in the startup, in the startup, you know, outside, who cares, but in the startup, there is no, uh, uh, politicians money, you know, swivel through, which happens a lot, by the way, many politicians try to make the black money white through investing in startups. So all of that due diligence, once it's done, then uh, the money is in your account, right? So that's the uh, general process, general uh, pitch categories. Um, investor pitch deck, uh, generally it has this format. Uh, like I said, we started with the problem statement. So this problem, there's a solution. Uh, who is it for? Who are you building this solution for? Who is facing the problem? The market, that means facts and figures from census data, from uh, market research data, right? So who is the market? Your business model, uh, you know, all your uh, money is going in, time is going in, value creation is happening, revenues are coming in. So multiple streams of revenue, uh, recurring revenue, all right, all of that goes into your business model. Uh, then go to market strategy. How are you going to acquire your first few customers? How are you going to grow your customer base? If you're going for a new market, right? Competition, how are you better than your competition? What is your competitive advantage? Your team, of course who's going to execute this and financials, right? A projection, how much money you need, fund allocation, uh, uh, exit strategy, right? So from all the businesses, you know, uh, I have this one learning I'm going to share with you is think big, 
start small, grow slow, then once you figure it out, grow really fast, right? So you have the big idea, start small, you know, test it out, especially you're in the traditional business, you're going in the tech domain, you're going in a new domain, uh, test it out, small, small things, small, small investment, okay, good. It's working, showing traction, grow slow, you will make mistakes, don't repeat the mistakes, right? Once you've made your enough mistakes and you see that this is scalable, this is repeatable, then take an investor's money to grow really fast because all these copycats are going to try to steal your market. That's where you take investors' money to grow really, really fast. And here is the fund allocation that I promised you. Idea stage, thinking big, 70% goes into development, 0% marketing because you don't have any customers, 30% operations. Startup phase, you're a small, you know, start small, grow slow phase, 50% development, 40% marketing, 10% operation. So you're very efficient business. Scale up phase, uh, grow fast, 20% development, you know, 70% marketing. You're really focusing on customer acquisition, growth, 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 10% operations. Of course, the 10% operations here is far bigger number than uh, 30% operations in the idea stage. But the point is, uh, of course, these are not numbers that are set in stone, but these are uh, I, kind of like the industry standard you know, where uh, this is the kind of proportion investors want to see uh, to make sure that you're an efficient business, whatever stage you are in. So like I said, Kolkata Veggies has a virtual incubation program. Uh, we have uh, specifically the investor ready program. So if you are planning to go to investors and you want to make sure, okay, the pitch deck, the business model, are we right? So we have a a 60 day program through which we get you up and ready. We connect you to investors and we uh, bring you on board. So that's the WhatsApp number. You can uh, WhatsApp that number and tell uh, our team that you're interested and they'll be happy to connect you. And uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, on Instagram. If you have any online questions, uh, I'm the only one with this in this world with that name Avello Roy. So I'm very easily Googleable. I'm easily found on social media. So just go on LinkedIn and Instagram, find me, and connect with me, I'll be happy to help you with whatever you need, regardless of incubation or not, I'm always there for you as a friend. And uh, I have some gifts for you also on youtube.com slash I've made around 210 videos on startup, on funding, on Bhagavad Gita, uh, all right? These are the things I, have, I care about. So whatever I know I've put in there in two minute, three minute video formats, go watch them. Uh, uh, you will you, you will appreciate it. You will like uh, the little nuances, things I've learned and things I've learned from my mentors. I've shared those in video format. Uh, so I'm done. Now let's have Q and A. Whatever questions you all might have. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, so I'm I'm just uh, unmuting uh, all. I mean, as in, uh, if anybody has any question to start off with, you know, because it's been a fantastic session. I mean. Uh, We've been like, together for almost now one hour uh, and 15 minutes, and it was pleasure, pleasure, and absolutely pleasure uh, listening to you. So yeah, Thank we go into the uh, question answer. I mean, uh, if anybody has a question, uh, start off. Uh, I Okay, Mr. Keshav Mundra is saying, oh, sorry, Mr. Adish Daga is saying, great learning, one of the best, oh, thank you so much. Best webinars. Keshav uh, Mundra. There's a question by Navneet Bhattar. It says, are indifference curves a good way of presenting the current market versus US in the pitch deck? And I'm, I mean, if Navneet, you're still here, would you like to uh, put the question yourself? I didn't uh, understand the question. Can you repeat that one more time? Or should I answer that since Navneet is maybe not here? Uh, yeah, okay, please go ahead, right? Should I answer that or should we go to the next question? I mean, you can answer that and then we can move to the next one. Okay, can you repeat the question for me? Uh, it says, are indifference curves a good way of presenting the current market versus US in the pitch deck? Versus us, I guess. Ah, versus, I was trying to figure out what is, okay. Uh -huh. I'm still not sure about the, can you explain the question to me? Indifference curve. I don't know what that means. Okay. Let's skip that question. Yeah, let's, let's skip that. Um, 
ed tech market growing further and what is the potential ha huh. so ed tech market is uh, growing but it's also very very crowded so unless you have something that is others are not doing so ed tech market is growing in terms of skills right especially the 50 year olds who are losing their jobs they have a very difficult time finding a new job so those fellows have already money you know that they want to spend in upskilling uh, themselves uh, also tier to tier three cities people want to learn uh, skills upskill themselves so skill area at tech is uh, really there's a nice opportunity in the uh, the school or the college area it's really uh, overcome by toppers by jews all of these guys and copycats of all of them in every state uh, it's very very crowded so at tech in the skill space yes very hot uh, most welcome mr mundra uh, uh, mr velo i mean while uh, while we'll have some more questions i mean i would like to also just take this uh, as a time you know i remember you mentioning that you are very inclined towards bhagavad gita i mean i know uh -huh. you, you you keep having uh, Uh, you on your youtube channel you are you talk about bhagavad gita is there something you know a lesson that you like to share you know to all all businessmen some learning from bhagavad gita sure um in chapter 2 text 14 uh, krishna says matra sparshas to kanteya shita ushna shukha dukada agama apaino anityam tam sit express to bharata which means uh, as soon as the senses the five senses that we have come in contact with any sense object there are two outcomes happiness or distress right and i've designed this world in such a way that if you're happy right now next is distress if you're distressed right now next comes happiness it's like changing seasons right there's winter there is no for a fact summer is coming if there's summer no for a fact winter is coming so right now we are going through the covid winter uh, so no for a fact good times are also coming there's going to be boom with all the new innovations uh, post covid right so so if we understand that the creator has created designed our system that way then it will be a boost for us right that we know that when things are bad things are going to get better the one thing he says is one thing is constant is my relationship with you that doesn't change everything else is changes but i am always there for you and whenever you need me you know you're my friend and my uh, so arjun was friend in our case is parmatma sitting in our heart our best friend so he's always there to help us brilliant uh oh there's this there's another a cousin of mine manoj bhaiya who's asking you know question you know story behind avelo's name i mean i think <laughs> it's the only name uh, that we can find on google so yeah so i was named after thomas edison's middle name thomas alva edison alva to avelo so basically my mother wanted me to be an innovator uh <laughs> so i think there's a question which is how's crowdfunding different from us or in in india yeah so in us crowdfunding uh, has gone to the next level where it's no more just about p2p people putting in money for a product but they actually get equity so there are companies like republic there are companies like um, seed fund that are basically they could be up to 200 people taking like little little equities in a startup and they can see track it that the startup is growing so their money that they put in is growing and the equity's value is growing in india that is not legal yet by the rbi uh, so uh, right now we're in the old stage of crowdfunding where people are throwing money at your business and you can grow it and either they get something or they don't get something but equity makes it even more exciting where it's democratizing investment it's not just venture capitalists and angel investors it is people in general who have a little bit of disposable income can throw money at you and take a small piece of your uh, uh, company like stock market right we we buy stocks in different companies so similarly this is kind of like stock market for startups uh, that's the difference we are not there yet but i think soon that will be in india legal also right interesting uh so i mean uh, maybe what i like to say is i think uh, you know your session has been so informative that actually you've answered all the questions you know so we actually have no questions from people because i think you've covered it pretty well uh, i just want to understand you know as in kolkata ventures i mean uh, is there uh, i mean you might be getting a lot of these pitches and businesses i mean is there some way that you know if if uh, you know our members would like to connect or you know are interested in you know kind of uh, uh, funding some kind of a project if i would put it this way do you work yeah. is this yes, is it absolutely absolutely so uh, we have uh, shortlisted startups 
and we have a network of investors that we are connected with. So if you want to be part of that network, feel free to connect with me on uh, LinkedIn mm -hmm. and we'll put you in the group and then we'll bring you. Uh, so every month or so we have five or six really shortlisted high potential revenue generating startups uh, and, and you can take a look at them if they're of interest to you. Uh, happy to you know connect them to you. And what are the usual ticket sizes if I can just ask you that? Uh, so we do anything between 25 lakhs to a crore because we come at a very early stage. All right, great. Uh, all right, uh, uh, now just, just like to uh, give us, uh, you know, I, I, mean, I would like to start saying that, you know, uh, it was around a week back, you know, I've been following Mr. Avelo on, on social media platform. I've been listening to his uh, YouTube channels. It so happened that I sent him a message and uh, within 15 minutes, I had him, you know, reply from him and he was very kind enough to say, okay, uh, my team will get in touch with you. And, uh, and that's how we've had this session. So I'd like to, you know, uh, thank you very much for being so available. And like he's mentioned that uh, he's absolutely accessible. So I'm, I'm sure a lot of our members are going to take uh, the best advantage of this. Uh, I'd like to just summarize it before uh, as a concluding uh, remark. Uh, I mean, some of the points which, which are a takeaway from this wonderful session. One is uh, look at lean startup. Don't get into the analysis of paralysis. It's not about being perfect, but it's about starting. Be honest and transparent, but you know your unique bragging quotient. Solve the problem in the cheapest and most efficient way. And I think what they're looking for is a 20x return on investment because you need to become a king of your niche market. Problem statement is something I'm sure a lot of us are going to be doing once the session is over. We'll sit down and write our 30 words of uh, uh, problem statement. And thank you so much for sharing us, you know, what's the different types of exit strategy, the different kinds of investment models. I think it's a fantastic uh, and a great learning session. So with that, uh, once again, would like to thank you on behalf of M Circle Chennai One and uh, looking forward to having you maybe for some more sessions uh, in the days to come. And uh, once again, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Velo, for taking out time from your uh, busy schedule. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Sir. Have a nice Sunday. Take care. Thank you so much. Sir.